Hi everyone, this is Professor M Das Science and this video is part of our series on maths for science and engineering. This video will cover homogeneous differential equations. Spoiler, to solve them, there is a very ingenious trick that allows us to transform them into separable differential equations, which we know how to solve. Let's go. In this video, we consider homogeneous first order ordinary differential equations. We consider a differential equation of this form, and we call such an equation homogeneous if the function f is a homogeneous function of degree zero. Homogeneous functions are a topic in themselves, but for the purposes of this video, all we need to know is the definition of a homogeneous function of degree n. We say that a function of two variables f of x, y is homogeneous of degree n, if when we multiply every argument of the function by any scalar lambda, the result is equal to lambda to the power n multiplying the original function. Going back to our differential equation at the top, we say that this equation is homogeneous if the function f here is a homogeneous function of degree zero. Big warning here, pay close attention. This is where the definition gets a little bit convoluted. A homogeneous function can in general be of any degree, say n here. However, the definition of a homogeneous first order differential equation states that this function f of x, y has to be of degree zero. If f of x, y was a general homogeneous function of a degree other than zero, say degree two, then this would not be a homogeneous first order differential equation. I know it may initially appear confusing, and it kind of is, but it's the, just the definition. To make things explicit, the function f must be such that f of lambda x lambda y is equal to lambda to the power of zero times f of x y. As lambda to the power of zero is simply one, we can rewrite this as simply f of x, y. In the rest of this video, we will explore how to solve differential equations of this form. Let's write down a general homogeneous equation again. And let's also write down the general condition that f must be a homogeneous function of degree zero. We're going to try to solve this general ODE by making some clever substitutions. First, let's choose lambda to be one over x. This means that we can write f of lambda x lambda y as f of one over x times x, one over x times y. We can further simplify this expression as f of one y over x. As f is a homogeneous function of degree zero, then we also have that f of lambda x lambda y must be equal to f of x, y. And so bringing these results together implies that f of x, y is equal to f of one y over x. In turn, this implies that we can rewrite our original differential equation as dy dx equal to f of one y over x. Let's write down the latest result. For the next step, we need to realize that the right-hand side no longer depends on x and y separately, but only depends on their ratio. This motivates us to introduce a new variable v as equal to y over x. And this new variable v allows us to write the function f in terms of v only. Now this looks promising, but we also need to deal with the left-hand side of the equation, which involves the derivative of y with respect to x. Using this definition, we can rewrite y in terms of v and x, and our derivative becomes this. We can now use the chain rule to write it as the first term times the derivative of the second term, plus the second term times the derivative of the first term. This derivative is equal to one, 
So we end up with v plus x dv dx. Inserting the top expression into the right hand side and inserting the bottom expression into the left hand side, we can rewrite our original differential equation like this. This is still the same equation, but now written in terms of x and v rather than the original x and y. So what have we accomplished with this new form for our equation? Well, this equation is now separable. To see it more clearly, let's copy it down here. We can move this v term to the other side and we obtain this. And it is now clear that we can move all v dependent terms to one side and all x dependent terms to the other side. And this is now clearly a separable equation. And we know how to solve separable equations. All we need to do is to integrate both sides like this. If you do need a refresher about separable equations, you can go back to the corresponding video we've linked it in the description. Once we've evaluated these integrals, we will have the solution to our differential equation in terms of v and x. We can then take a final step and use the fact that v is equal to y over x to get our solution in terms of y and x. And we will be done. We will look at an example of solving a homogeneous equation in a moment. But before we do that, let me briefly discuss notation, as you'll often encounter homogeneous equations discussed in different forms. Confusingly, this is going to involve homogeneous functions of different orders. But at the end of the day, all the definitions are mathematically equivalent. Let's start with the definition we've used so far of a homogeneous equation, where f is a homogeneous function of degree zero. A very common alternative is to replace the function f on the right hand side by a ratio of two functions a and b like this. In this case, the equation is homogeneous if a is a homogeneous function of some degree n and b is also a homogeneous function of the same degree n. Let me emphasize again that a and b must be homogeneous functions of the same degree n here and here. And you should convince yourself that this alternative form is entirely equivalent to the form that we've been using up here. Another very common way to write down homogeneous equations is to start with this second form and then rewrite it as b of x, y, dy equal to a of x, y, dx. As another alternative, this last form is often rearranged so that everything is moved to one side, which is then set to zero. Yet another alternative form, this minus sign here is often removed by defining new functions m equal to a and n equals minus b. With these, we can rewrite our differential equation as m of x, y, dx plus n of x, y, dy equals to zero. All these forms for a homogeneous equation are equivalent and all can be solved in the same way. You will most certainly encounter homogeneous equations written in any of these forms in your work, so you should be comfortable with all of them. To finish, let's look at an example. dy dx equal to y minus x over x. First, we need to check that this is indeed a homogeneous equation. To do so, we identify the function f of x, y as equal to y minus x over x. Next, we need to evaluate f of lambda x lambda y. We get lambda y minus lambda x all over lambda x. 
And we can then cancel the lambda in the numerator here and here with the lambda in the denominator here. We end up with y minus x over x, and this is our original function f. This means f is a homogeneous function of degree zero, so we are indeed dealing with a homogeneous equation. Let's make some room. Now that we know we have a homogeneous equation, the key step is to introduce the new function v as equal to y over x. To rewrite our equation in terms of this new function v, let's first consider the derivative on the left hand side. We've already done this before, but very quickly we can rewrite it as the derivative of vx, and then using the chain rule we end up with v plus x dv dx. Next, let's consider the right hand side. We can replace y by v times x to get this expression, and we can now cancel the x in the numerator here and here with the x in the denominator here, and we end up with v minus 1. Bringing everything together, we can use this expression for the left hand side, and we get v plus x dv dx and this expression for the right hand side, and we get v minus 1. The v cancels here and here, so we end up with x dv dx equal to minus 1. Let's make some room again, and let's copy the latest differential equation we've got. This is now trivially separable. So we can move all v dependent terms to one side and all x dependent terms to the other side. I'm leaving some spaces so that in the next step we can integrate the left hand side with respect to v and the right hand side with respect to x. The integral with respect to v is a standard one that gives v. For the right hand side we have the integral of 1 over x and this is again a standard integral, which you will remember is equal to the natural logarithm of x. So overall, we can rewrite this as v equal to minus logarithm of x, and we add an integration constant c. So this is our solution in terms of v and x. But to really be able to finish, we want to go back to y. Considering the definition of v up here, we can rewrite our solution as y over x equal to this expression. And as a final step, we can write y of x as equal to x multiplying c minus the logarithm of x. And this is our solution for the homogeneous differential equation. Continuing with our example, we have now solved this homogeneous differential equation and found that the solution takes this form. Whenever we find a solution to a differential equation, we should always, always check that we have the correct solution by inserting it back into the equation and confirming that the equation is satisfied. So let's do it. Our proposed solution is y equal x multiplying c minus the logarithm of x. And to simplify things, we can first multiply through with x to end up with this new expression. Now to confirm that this is a valid solution, we can first evaluate the left hand side of the equation, which is the derivative of y with respect to x. Inserting this solution into the derivative, we get the derivative with respect to x of this expression. The derivative of the first term is simply c, and for the second term we need to use the chain rule. We get the derivative of the first term times the second term plus the first term times the derivative of the second term. And this is trivially equal to 1, and the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over x. Putting everything together, we end up with c minus logarithm of x minus 1. In parallel to this, we can evaluate the right-hand side of the equation, which we first copy down. 
substituting our proposed solution into this expression, we get this very long new expression. The factors of x cancel here, here, and here in the numerator, with the x here in the denominator. So that we end up with c minus logarithm of x minus 1. And comparing this expression for the left hand side with this expression for the right hand side, we confirm that our solution is indeed correct. Hooray! As a very final step, let's draw the solution. We will draw the function on this graph. And we're focusing on the positive x axis because the logarithm function up here is undefined for negative values of x. The solution of a differential equation involves the constant c, so we really have a family of solutions. To make things a bit simpler with a drawing, let's first consider the value c equals 0. In this case, our solution becomes y of x equal to minus x times the logarithm of x. And this blue curve represents that solution. It starts at the origin here, then reaches a maximum value at this point, whose value is the inverse of the number e, and then crosses the x-axis again at 1, after which it becomes negative. Now for positive c values, we get this family of green curves. They have a similar shape to the blue curve, but the maximum of the function and its crossing point with the horizontal axis increasingly move towards larger values of x. For negative c values, we get this family of red-orange curves. And again, we have a similar shape to the others, but the maximum and crossing point of the function go in the opposite direction with decreasing value for c. Overall, for any value of c, we get a curve of a similar shape, and each one of these curves is a solution to our differential equation. You can check out additional examples of homogeneous differential equations linked in the description. I hope that you liked the video, and please subscribe.